It is the year 10191. We see a planet called Arrakis, where it's people called Freeman Live who are skilled warriors. We see Cheney, who is a Freeman, who tells us that her planet is ruled by Harkonnens who have invaded them. They came here to steal the spice of the planet which they harvest using machines and have become very rich. All planets are ruled by an emperor called Shadam who had sent Harkonnens to Arrakis to get the spice. One day the emperor ordered the Harkonnens to leave the planet which surprised Cheney and her people. Next we see Paul who has dreams of Cheney and wakes up. He is the prince of House of Atriides on a planet called Kaladin and meets his mother Rebecca. Rebecca tells him to be ready for meeting the Emperor's military and asks him to practice his voice. Paul uses his voice to control and commands Rebecca to give him glass of water. Paul is being trained by Rebecca in Bene Gesserit, an exclusive woman club whose members possess advanced physical and mental abilities. Later Paul reads about Freeman and comes to know that spice from their planet is used for interstellar travel and is very valuable substance. Later Paul and his father Leto welcome the king's messenger on their planet who brings an order. He tells the emperor has decided for Leto to overtake the spice production operation on Arrakis and Leto accepts. He uses his ring as a seal to accept the order and later we see Duncan who meets Paul. Paul requests him to go to Iraqis earlier with him and tells him about the dream he had about Duncan. He says he dreamt about him dying and Duncan tells him not to worry and he will soon see him on Arrakis. Paul goes and requests Leto to send him earlier, but he says he cannot risk that since he is the future king of Atriides. Leto says they face political danger and the Emperor fears Atriides' people and that's why he is sending them to Arrakis to fail. Leto plans to form an alliance with Freeman and has sent Duncan earlier to know more about them. Leto plans to use their abilities to fight and become strong against Harkonnens and Emperor. Paul feels he is not ready to lead Atriides but Leto tells him he will know himself when he is ready and not to worry much. Later Paul is trained by Gurney, who is a weapons expert, and Paul activates his shield and they start fighting. Paul manages to defend himself and they both manage to defeat each other and Gurney tells him to be ready for Arrakis. Next we see Rabin who meets Lord Baron, the leader of Harkonnen, and tells him all their ships have left Arrakis as per Emperor's order. Rabin is not happy leaving and Baron tells him that Emperor is jealous of Atriides' rising power and this is a gift for them. Rebecca wakes Paul and tells him her teacher Gaius Helen has come to meet him and asks Dr. Yu to check his health. Yu checks him and says Paul is fine and Helen has come here to know about Paul's dream. When Paul meets Helen, she uses the voice power to call him near and asks him to place his hand in a box. She tells him to not remove his hand from the box which will give him immense pain or else she will kill him with a poisonous needle. He puts his hand in the box and suffers a lot of pain and Helen is able to foresee some of his future. He passes the test and removes his hand and Helen says he is quite powerful because he is Jessica's son. She asks him about his dream and wishes him good luck for his future and goes from there. She scolds Jessica for giving birth to a son instead of a daughter and then teaching him about their secret voice control. Helen says Paul is powerful but he is not the Kwisatz who is also called as the One and they have many other individuals who could be ideal. Paul hears their conversation and comes to know Bene Gesserit have been cross-breeding bloodlines to create the One. Quasats will be able to see all past and the future and bring all to a better future and rule. They all arrive at Arrakis with their army and freemen are excited to see Paul and call him Lisan al-Galib. Paul asks the meaning and Rebecca says freemen think of him as their messiah who has come to save them from outer space. He comes to know Bene Gesserit have been telling the freemen about their messiah and they fly away from there in their helicopter. Rebecca later chooses a woman who work as a maid, and the maid gives her a gift of knife. She says the knife is made from the tooth of sandworms which travel under the desert. 
Later, Paul watches video about sandworms and comes to know Freeman use sandwalk to walk on sand to avoid them. Suddenly, Paul sees an insect, which is a weapon to kill him, enter his room through a hole. He hides behind the lights and manages to catch and destroy it, and the soldiers find a Harkonnen agent. The agent was hiding in a wall and, and is now dead and used pipes to launch the attack on Paul. Leto gets angry on the soldiers and asks them to find the spy and catch him. Helen meets Baron and tells him Emperor will support him with his Sardaukar army if he kills Leto. She says Rebecca and Paul must not be harmed as they belong to Bene Gesserit and Baron agrees. After she leaves, Baron tells his man to capture and leave them in the desert after Leto dies. Later at a meeting, Leto comes to know they need to start harvesting spice, but they are behind schedule. He comes to know Harkonnen sabotaged the equipment before leaving and decides to meet Dr. Kynes, who is charge of running the operations. Suddenly, Duncan arrives and tells he was in desert with the Freeman and has brought their leader Stilgar to talk with Leto. Duncan says there are millions of freemen who hide in cravens below the desert and Leto is happy to hear this. Stilgar comes and meets Leto and asks him to harvest all the spice he needs, but not to hunt his people and Leto agrees. Stilgar is happy to know this and leaves from there and Duncan gives Paul a para compass since the moons here have magnetic fields. Leto meets Kynes who gives them still suits, which are specially made for desert and are made by Freeman. She examines the suit and tells the suit recycles the sweat to water and the suit is required to survive outside. They go to examine the spice fields and see a harvester extracting the spice. Kynes tells any sound attracts sandworms and suddenly Leto spots one sandworm approaching the harvester. Kynes calls in a lifter plane to carry the harvester away, but the plane malfunctions and isn't able to lift it. Leto decides to save the crew and calls his other ship to rescue all 21 members and lands his ship. Paul goes out to get them and touches the sand and sees the spice in it, and Leto comes to know the sandworm is two minutes away. Paul tells the workers to quickly go on the planes, but is exposed to the spice in desert and starts having visions. Gurney goes out and manages to wake Paul, and they barely manage to reach the ship in time. They fly away with the workers and see the sandworm swallow the harvester. Leto tells Paul to be careful next time and tells Kynes he has been purposely given such equipment so that he fails. Dr. Yu checks Paul and says he got an allergic reaction to spice, but Paul says he got a vision. He tells Rebecca he saw a woman in his vision and a war coming and he also saw his mother is pregnant. Rebecca is shocked to hear this since she also was not aware about this. The Sardaukar and Harkonnen armies prepare themselves to launch an attack on Atriides. Leto meets Rebecca and lets her to protect their son in case something happens to him and she agrees. At night, Leto tells Rebecca she should have married her and the guards outside his room are killed by someone. The shields are bought down and Leto goes out and finds the maid has been attacked and is dead. Suddenly, Leto is attacked by a poisonous dart and falls down and we see Dr. You did this. Gurney wakes up and goes outside to see they are being attacked by enemy soldiers. The enemy starts destroying their ships and killing their soldiers and send their soldiers to attack them. Yu tells Leto Baron has kidnapped his wife and he had no choice but to betray him. He promises to help Paul and takes Leto's ring and replaces tooth with a poisonous one so he can kill Baron. He says to crush the tooth at right time which will release poisonous gas in air and kill everyone near him. Duncan manages to kill few soldiers and finds Paul is missing from his room. Paul and Rebecca have been captured by Harkonnen soldiers who are taking them in a plane to leave them in the desert. The enemy launches an attack on rest of the soldiers and Duncan escapes from their stealing an enemy ship. Rebecca signals Paul to use the voice and he manages to control one soldier in freeing Rebecca. She then uses her voice to kill all the remaining soldiers and they come to know the ship has been disabled. They see their home has been destroyed and feel sad and Leto wakes up captured by Baron. 
You comes to meet Baron and asks to free his wife, but Baron kills him and tells Leto that his all family has died tonight. Leto calls Baron near him to speak with him, and Baron activates his shield, and Leto uses the poisonous tooth to release the gas and air. Paul finds his father's ring, and Rebecca comes to know Leto has died and cries in pain. Kynes meets with Duncan, who requests her to tell all other great houses of the kingdom about the Emperor's betrayal, but she refuses to do so. We see everyone has died in the room, but Baron has managed to survive, but badly injured. Later, Paul has another vision of the future due to Spice in the Sand, where he again sees Cheney in it. He sees a war is coming, and he is also fighting in it as Freeman and leading the war and gets scared. Rebecca tries to calm him down, but he shouts on her saying she has made him a freak and cries and hugs her. Next morning, they come out of their hiding place and see Duncan has come to rescue them and go with him. They go an old station to hide from the soldiers and Paul asks Kynes to tell all great houses about the emperor and his plan. Kynes says no one will listen to her. Paul says he can ask the emperor's daughter hand in marriage, but she doesn't agree to this. We see the Sardaukar army has found their location, and Duncan realizes this and goes to fight them alone. Paul tries to stop him, but Duncan closes the door and starts fighting them, and Kynes opens a secret exit to escape. Duncan distracts the soldiers from opening the door, and the others escape from there, and Duncan is killed. Kynes tells them to take the helicopter and find the freeman, and she will go and inform others of the attack. Paul and Rebecca escape from there, and Kynes uses a thumping device to attract sandworms. She sees the sandworm coming but is attacked by soldiers, and they all get eaten by the worm. Paul sees enemy helicopters are after them and goes in sandstorm to avoid them. He loses control of the aircraft and sees it is getting destroyed and has a vision to go with the flow. He lets go of the control to the aircraft and we see Baron is getting treatment from the attack. His nephew Robin tells him that Paul and Rebecca are dead since they entered the storm. Baron tells him to start selling the spice and resume its production since the war has cost him money. The helicopter comes out of the storm on its own but loses its blades and Paul lands it safely in desert. They get out the helicopter and wear their suits and start searching for Fremen and find their location. They decide to use the sandwalk to go to their location to avoid the sandworms but are attacked by one. They manage to escape from it and see they are saved by the Freemen who have surrounded them. The freemen want to kill them and get their body water, but Paul recognizes Stilgar among them. Stilgar says they can take Paul with them, but not Rebecca since she is weak and attacks her. Rebecca manages to defend herself and Stilgar sees she is strong and agree to take them to their village. Paul meets Cheney the girl from his dreams and she tells that other Fremen think he is their messiah. One freeman named Jamie's opposes to this and challenges Paul to decide Rebecca's fate. Cheney gives her sword to Paul for the fight and says she does not believe he is Lisan al Galib. They begin fighting and Paul defends himself from Jamie's and comes to know he is to kill him to win. Paul has another vision and he kills Jamie's and wins the fight and all freemen accept him as their own. Stilgar asks him to follow him to his village, but Rebecca says they need to escape from the planet. Paul decides to follow the freemen as per his vision, and they carry Jamie's body with them. Paul sees one freeman riding the sandworm and is happy to with his decision to go with them.